Welcome back to New Rockstars. My name is Anna Vanston, and hardcore fans of The Last of Us game were thrilled to see some of the voice and mocap actors making a return for the HBO show, but there might have been even more cameos than you caught. Today, we're going to be taking a look at all of the noteworthy cameos in the show and how they got involved. So let's start with cameos that were heard instead of seen. If you thought the infected clicker sounded exactly like the game, <laughs> You would be right! Voice actors Misty Lee and Philip Kovats voiced the clickers in the first game and returned to voice them in the show as well. Lee did an interview where she talked about how she helped create the signature clicker sound for the game, saying when she went into the booth, she was showed a picture of what they were going to look like and what they did, and it was all experimentation from there. She stressed the importance of embodying the character's posture and mindset when trying to find the sound, and how the team wanted to stay away from it sounding too human, but didn't want to remove the humanity completely. She remembered being given the visual of tearing your family apart, but you can't stop it. Chilling! When she eventually came to the clicking noise, they knew they were on the right path and started messing with variations of that. She found it, taught it to Kovats, and he in turn taught others. She noted the main difference between voice acting for the game and voice acting for the show was that for the game, they just recorded all of the sounds ahead of time, but for the show, they would be shown the scene at a super low volume and they would have to voice over it, having to adjust their sounds to the clicker's movements, taking turns, and at times voicing them together. <laughs> She admits that while the voice doesn't hurt to do, it does do some damage, and she had to go on vocal rest for several days following the episode. Worth it! Not bad, right? Sometimes when you love a show or movie, it's not enough to have seen it. You need some merch to commemorate the occasion, and Nerd Riot's got you covered. If the finale of The Last of Us left you hungry for more, pick up a Lunch of Us tea, available in cream or black, featuring the logo of Todd's Steakhouse from episode 8 of the series. Don't eat there, though. Just don't do that. Unless you're a cannibal, in which case, bone up a tea, baby! If you're stoked for the upcoming John Wick movie, Nerd Ride has a whole line of John Wick shirts to make you feel like you've got a seat at the high table. There's the Baba Yaga tea, a gun chucks tea, and a tea for the high table itself, proclaiming, I have served, I will be of service. Get them now and you'll be able to wear them to opening night, and then also the next weekend when you see John Wick Chapter 4 for the second time. And of course, if you're obsessing over the Mandalorian right now, there's a whole line of Mando merch in the Way collection, with tees, beanies, hats, and even stuff for kids. To get your hands on the merch you need, head to nerdriot.shop today. Join the riot over at nerdriot.shop. Another vocal cameo was made by co-showrunner Craig Mazin's daughter, Jessica Mazin, who sang a cover of Depeche Mode's Never Let Me Down Again at the end of episode 6. On HBO's The Last of Us podcast, Craig said he wanted to reintroduce the song in a female voice to represent Ellie and that he knew his daughter could nail it. He sent her the song and asked her to do a slow and haunting cover with a daughter mourning the loss of her father in mind, and joked that she unenthusiastically said okay, and then forgot about it until he brought it up a couple weeks later, stressing that it was for television. And to be fair, you know, you should have left with that. But it was worth it as we got this beautiful cover as a result. going around new rock stars that Craig Mazin might have also made a vocal cameo as the soldier that shoots Sarah, but that has yet to be officially verified. Serving as the perfect bridge from only heard to seen, we have Laura Bailey, who was Abby in The Last of Us Part 2, who made a sneaky cameo behind a mask as a Firefly nurse in the finale. Bailey wasn't cast in the show until late in the game, where Mazin contacted her in the final days of production, wanting to get her in the show, but only having that part available. He says she was completely game though, and actually said it was even better that she'd be wearing a mask, because then it would be like a cool secret cameo. What Mason didn't know, however, is that Bailey actually also played one of the nurses in the first game in addition to a reporter at the beginning of the game. Life is weird, friends. Another actor from the game who got to make a return, this time in the original role of Perry, was Jeffrey Pierce, voice actor of Tommy for the games. Pierce admits that he knew his window to play a live-action version of Tommy closed about a decade ago, but when he knew that creator Neil Druckmann and Mason got the green light on the show, he emailed Druckmann saying, Look, I'll come carry a spear and stand in the background. And and really just wanted to be a part of the project and support it in whatever way he could. After initially reading a few different ways for one particular character, Pierce says they told him that they weren't ever going to buy him as a victim sort of role, but that they would see if there was something else down the road. Fast forward two weeks, and they sent him the scripts for Perry, saying they found the perfect thing, he was overjoyed and happily accepted the role, and they said, don't cut your hair, we'll see you in January, February. Definitely beats carrying a spear and standing in the background. Now there's only one actor who returned to reprise their original role, and that is Merle. Dandridge as Marlene. Dandridge says she doesn't remember exactly when she first heard that the show was going to be made, but that when she did, she was like, oh man, that would be so cool. I don't remember when I first heard about it, but when I did, I was like, mommy want that. 
but didn't think they would actually cast her because it was such a big show. So she thought her chances of getting cast in place of a bigger name was slim. But thank goodness Druckmann called her to offer her the role, and she remembers being in disbelief and just so honored and excited to get to rediscover the character. Dandridge also notes that she thought she was a better fit for Marley now than back when she played her for the game because she had aged and matured into the character and thus could relate better. But she was also nervous making the transition from motion capture performance to film, not only because the time gap since she played Marlene was so great, but for practical reasons too. Actually wearing the clothes and getting to walk around in the world was a whole new experience for her, down to little things, like she had never worn a wig on camera before. But the heart of the character that Dandridge helped create really shone through, and seeing her get to bring this character to life again and deepen her story was such a treat. One of the more well-known cameos was the voice and mocap actor for Joel, Troy Baker, who played James in the show. Baker said in an interview that he didn't actually want to play Joel, having already had the opportunity to play him and giving it his all then, and loved the choice of Pedro Pascal playing Joel instead. He joked he would have been happy just being a clicker, and recounts the story of Druckmann approaching him to play James and Baker being like, oh dude, who's James? Oh right, buddy boy, the guy with the hat. At that time, he knew the game well and knew that James died, but also knew that the show would have the opportunity to zoom in on certain characters and expand their stories, and thought it was a unique opportunity for him to see this world through a whole new set of eyes. He was thrilled at the prospect and notes he loves playing villains, enjoying the challenge of getting the audience to like him even for a second so the hatred is that much stronger when it's called for. What he didn't anticipate, however, was the added difficulties that came with doing a live action adaptation. When the actors were mocapping for the game, there was never or any blood or anything, they just had to pretend that they were bleeding. In film, it's a lot more complicated, and he remembers spending the entire morning in prosthetics to get a magnetic attachment in his neck so the cleaver would stick when Ellie swung it at him, along with going through eight changes of wardrobe due to all the fake blood gushing everywhere and having to sit in a cold pool of his own blood during takes. Acting ain't always glamorous, folks. One of the most appropriately symbolic cameos in The Last of Us was Ashley Johnson playing Anna, Ellie's mom. Johnson played Ellie in the games and describes what an emotional experience it was. She said Neil texted her that they would love for her to play Anna for a scene and she just burst into tears. I remember when Neil texted me and <laughs> I just instantly burst into tears because I was like, wait, are you serious? No way. Since the actors for video games usually don't transfer over to the screen adaptation, she was utterly shocked that she would even get to play a part. Druckmann never intended on leaving her out of it though, since she had been such an integral part of the process of creating Ellie, and felt this part was perfect, saying she gave birth to Ellie figuratively with the game, and here she literally does it in the show. And it truly is the perfect handoff. Ellie is a huge part of Johnson and vice versa, and to be able to reflect that in the show's story and allow the audience to feel the love that Johnson has for the character is deeply meaningful. And to be the one to give birth to Ellie in the show and also be the first character to fight to keep Ellie alive meant a lot to Johnson. In the game, there's a letter from Anna that Ellie keeps in her backpack, and Johnson revealed that during the show she actually wrote that letter out and kept it in her pocket, which is just so touching. It was the cameo no one knew they needed until it happened. So that concludes all of the cameos from the HBO show. Which cameo was your personal favorite? Are there any you hope to see for season two? Let us know below. Until then, you can follow me on Twitter at It's Anna Vanston and follow and subscribe to New Rockstars at New Rockstars for more breakdowns of everything you love. Ah.